Good evening, everybody. It's Cheryl, and I apologize for not doing a video earlier. I had a couple of friends who asked me, when are you going to do another video of your garden? We miss Lady. <laughs> Um, well, I've had a couple of things going on, and I realized that probably since May, I've not done a video, and uh, so I thought I'd catch you up on what's going on in the garden. So, say hi, lady. Lady. All right, stop sniffing over there. That's weird. Say hi. Okay. Um, well, things are progressing very nicely um, for the most part you know it's uh, always a work in progress so in the last couple of weeks I've had horrible horrible aphids on my fava beans I've never grown them before um, kind of didn't know what I was getting into but you see all that kind of black debris well about a week ago that was like all along here was like completely black with ugly aphids, ugly black aphids. And I was looking at, should I buy some ladybugs because they eat aphids and have them shipped here and blah, blah, blah. And literally the day after I had Googled that and checked them out on how to buy them, these little guys moved in. It's like literally just a couple of days ago. You see that? Uh, it's a little fuzzy. Why is it fuzzy? There you go. That is ladybug larva. And it they are now all over these plants. They moved in. And they came to eat up all the aphids. So now what you're seeing is just damage. But most of the aphids are gone. It was um, It's amazing. Absolutely amazing. Anyway. Uh... So things are growing. This is the um, the patch that has all the celery and carrots and onions. I've started topping off the onions because uh, apparently that's what you're supposed to do when they start flopping over. And I actually cut them up into little tiny pieces and I've been drying them in my toaster oven on warm. And we'll see, it, apparently you can make a really good onion powder just from the, the green part of the onions. So I'm trying that. Oh look, another ladybug baby. Hello ladybug baby. Eat the aphids. Go ahead, eat the aphids. Um, parsley is starting to, well it had been going to seed, but I think it's gonna flower pretty soon. And I'm just gonna keep that here even though you know, the leaves are kind of, you wouldn't want to cook with because I want to see what the flowers are like. And here's the celery, that's growing really nicely. Um, the beets, oh, okay. So another thing that's happened since the last time we chatted is another groundhog. I know it's not the same groundhog from last year. It's a different groundhog because he's smaller. Maybe it's the groundhog's baby, I don't know. Anyway, he moved in. Uh, he's living underneath the patio, and he happens to like the tops of beets. Yeah, so he eats them, they come back. He eats some more, they come back. Um, I'm not that worried because I'm not eating them for the leaves. I'm eating them for the, the little bulbs. So if you can see here, they're starting to plump out, and... Um, I multi-sold them, so I'm gonna be taking the outer ones in a little while to let the other ones kind of grow on and get all plumped up. Okay, so that's that one. All right, the alyssum's filled in nicely and carrots are coming along. I'll be thinning them out as soon as I can get like, you know, a good sized spring carrot for a salad or something. Um, let's see. Ooh, the cone flowers. The echinacea have a lot of buds on them and I was worried about them because the groundhog apparently went to town on them as well a few weeks ago but they're coming back here's the lily it's about to burst okay let's see okay so I planted some eggplant 
and the green beans. I, I planted all of those green bean starters that I had. So this patch here behind the eggplant, that, those are pinto beans. And then over here are uh, pole beans that are purple, white, and green. And this lettuce right here, I think it's black seeded something or other. That actually I planted last year and it's doing really, really well now. So we've been eating salads off of that. Oh, by the way, groundhogs also like romaine lettuce. Yeah, they've been eating, he's been eating the romaine. Although I guess he didn't find this one yet. Okay, oh, 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 so my lavender patch. Look at this, look at this, I'm so excited. So last year they didn't do anything. This year, check this out, there we go. Just about to bud. And then I'm gonna harvest them. Oh my God, it smells so good. I'm very excited finally to get some lavender. And look at how big they got, how tall they got. I don't know if you can see that, but they're kind of like willowing out like that. Chamomile is growing. Remember, it was mad at me. Well, it perked back, and they're really starting to uh, flower now. So I come out whenever one's completely flowered like that. I just pick it, and I put it on a paper towel, and I'm drying them. And uh, once they're really dry, I'll put them in a jar, and then I'll have chamomile tea. Planted some begonias in, in amongst the mist. Oh, look at those chamomile flowers. Aren't they cute? This is a different type of lavender. Uh, probably a different color, too. But see, it's blooming a little bit earlier. And that, that was a plant I thought was sure to die. From seed, I started some zinnias and marigolds. And to list them here, here are the gladiolas that I had transplanted. Um, didn't know if the bulbs were going to come up, but now look at them. Pretty cool. Um, I got, I rescued two hydrangeas uh, plants from my mother who had forgotten about these. And I think they're coming along. They're in a nice big pot. I'd love to have some hydrangeas. These are ice plants. I haven't transplanted them yet, but um, I'm going to put these under the tree. I also planted some more chamomile under the tree because I didn't know what, what to do with it. So I figure um, both the ice plants and the chamomile are not long-rooted uh, flowers, so they would make a very nice ground cover for underneath here, underneath the big tree over here. So that's what I'm going to do next. Brought my house plants out. They weren't too happy for a while. Even though this gets very, very little sun, it's they still got scalded a little bit. But the new growth is wonderful. So they do like being outside. That's the Solomon seal. I haven't put it in the ground yet. But I did put in a bunch of the begonias and the impatiens. Oh, and look at this coleus. That it was so... These guys were so tiny when I got them. Look at the size now. And it's got these flowers. To be honest, I didn't even know they bloomed. And they're very pretty. Yeah. This is um, one of my house plants. It's got a lot of new growth, but the old growth was not happy with the sun. Um, so I put these hanging baskets with some begonias in them. And I was transplanting the alyssum. Actually, I was just going to rip them out. And I said, you know what? Let me see if I can put them in the hanging baskets. Well, this one's okay. But everybody else got mad. They're not, I don't know if they're going to come back. But I'm just going to leave them for a little while. That was just last weekend, so. All righty, let's see. Let's go over here. Um, okay, this is a butterfly bush that was looking great until this morning and I just think that it got too dry I don't know um, anyway I just watered it really really deeply so I'm hoping it'll bounce back it's got blooms on it I just want it to live all right here are the potatoes I first planted in April 
Um, this was from Supermarket Potatoes, so I kind of wasn't expecting much out of them. And that's what I'm getting. Here's a little pepper plant over there. It's a cherry pepper plant. That's doing pretty well. This is my pepper patch. These are the ones that I started from seed. Uh, half of these are jalapeno and half of them are bell peppers. So they're very slow to grow and I think they're doing pretty good. So I'm kind of happy with that. But if you remember, I built this bed. Um, I had started with uh, construction, uh, with the cardboard and then I put dirt in and I put the uh, bricks around it and it made a very nice little bed over here. So I'm pleased with that. A row of begonias. My son gave me a lot of begonias for Mother's Day, so that's what's coloring up the yard right now, which is exciting. So over here, I put in the tomatoes. Um, I did not do well with the tomatoes I started from seed this year. Uh, they were pretty much all taken by fungus gnats, which was very, very disappointing. But uh, these are from Starts. Luckily, I have these as backup, and they're doing really well. And I'm doing something to, to um, stake them this year. If you remember last year, my tomatoes were never staked. They were never pruned. They just all got mildewy and fell on top of each other, and it was a big mess. I, I got a lot of tomatoes, but not many red tomatoes, actually. Anyway, this year I'm trying something that they call the uh, Florida Weave, which is... Um, you basically weave string, um, wrap around some poles and just weave in between and that helps stake up the, the tomato plant and um, I did that the other day and it seems to be really working nicely so hopefully as they keep getting bigger and bigger um, the weight of the plants will be able to still be supported by by these cut back the chamomile gave it a haircut um just so you know it didn't get all it, it was getting a little wacky and, and weedy doesn't look that much better to be honest spinach is doing well um more romaine that the uh groundhog ate but the, the groundhog doesn't like spinach, so, oh well, more for us. Some of the um, spinach that I planted last year and also the Swiss chard, um, I've pulled out. I have a little bit more to pull out. As you can see, all the Swiss chards go into seed. And um, listen, they perform very well. So I'll pull it out, pull off, um, this is the spinach, see how it's going to seed. So I'll pull it out, make some more meals out of it, and then um, clear, really clear the beds for when the tomatoes get much bigger. But for now, they're okay because the tomatoes aren't that big. Um, the zucchini seeds haven't come up yet. I actually had to uh, rip out the zucchinis that I first planted because they weren't healthy looking. I said, you know what, let's just try this again. And then this is the uh, yellow gooseneck, I think it's called, uh, that I planted from seed about, about a week before I did the zucchini seed. So I'm, I, I'm expecting the zucchinis to pop up any day. Let's see what else. Oh, looks like a sunflower is about to start. I also started this bed, which nothing had, I just literally planted it. So I didn't, um, but what's going to be here is sunflowers, zinnias, oh. marigolds. That'll be very nice. Um, it was just a dead space in the yard. So I transplanted this marigold. It'll perk back up. And in here are cherry tomato seedlings. Like I said, tomatoes that I started from seed, they were all taken by gnats. Um, here are the seed potatoes that I had ordered. This one is a seed potato. This one is a supermarket potato. And this one is a seed potato. And actually, all three of these are doing fine. I'm going to stick with grow bags from now on. I just think that they do better. It could actual, actually be that the groundhog 
is eating the potatoes from underneath the patio. I suspect that because I've already lost this uh, potato plant. And I suspect that he's just munching away underneath there. He's also munched away on, hmm, where'd it go? Oh, the broccoli that was in here. Look, look what he did to the broccoli. And you know what? The broccoli was on its way out anyway. I'm going to rip this out and put some something new in, and I'm not exactly sure what yet. It may be turnips. It may be Swiss chard. Not really sure yet. Peas are doing well. Um... I thought for a little while we got really hot about two weeks ago that they were going to be on their way out, but then it cooled down again and they sprung back to life. So we'll keep those in for a little while longer. I direct sowed some cucumbers. There's a little cucumber popping up. So by the time the peas are out, I'm thinking the cucumbers should be ready again. Oh, I and this is interesting. Also, in this last month, we had a family of baby rabbits born. They were living right here. It was quite interesting trying to keep my dog away from them. But I did, and they lived, and they're happy, and they're now running around eating the rest of my gardens. And the little baby rabbits prefer nasturtium and marigolds. So for a very small garden, I'm supporting quite a bit of wildlife, but that's okay. That's, you know, I guess there's enough to go around for all. Anyway, that's it for tonight, and um, I just wanted to catch you up on what's been going on. Sorry it's so long, but it's been a while. And uh, listen, if you guys ever have any questions or anything, people ask me questions now, and, you know, how do I do this, or what's going on with that, or why did you do that? you know, feel free to ask me and I'd be happy to impart whatever little knowledge I might have, okay? All right. Anyway, enjoy the rest of your June and um, I'll be back in a couple of weeks. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye.